be doing. You need to be buffing your entire team. You want to get those fervor stacks on as many people as you can. This is going to give them a, all a damage increase, and which is going to help your team, you know, push their team back and get those early kills and win the first team fight. One thing that when we talked about cancel casting, one of my favorite things to do with this ability is if I have everyone at 90%, 85% health, and I, ha and I feel like I have time or no one's really taking that much damage, what I like to do is fervor buff someone and maybe let two stacks go off for 10% increased damage and then cancel the cast. So that way, we, you helped, you're giving them a little bit more damage that extra healing strength is there because if you use your regular cast heal on a target that is fervored, it will use those stacks to heal them for more. So you can use that time to, if you have them all topped off or around full health, you can let a couple stacks go off on a couple different people and they can get extra damage and you can use those stacks later for healing if you need to. So it's really important to uh, try and keep that up as much as possible whenever there's downtime whereas you're waiting for the team to respawn it's you're running back to your team with another ally or just at the beginning of an arena yes you can block a healing if, if it's well not a healing if it's but blessed if it's beacon or uh, if the blessed beacon is being casted on the enemy unit it can be blocked this face heal here will block this block um, and if I cast beacon, it gets on cooldown and is blocked. One other thing to note about Fervor is that once you land the cast, well, Pazic is throwing smoke bombs, well, once you land the cast, as I'm about to show here on Primeen, you can be anywhere. Once you land the cast, it doesn't matter where you are on the map or any line of sight, it will channel until cancelled or until completed. So you can hit someone with like really far across the map boss and uh, it'll channel fully and that's one thing to take note of that you only need the line of sight for the initial cast and then you can LOS. And would you like to touch on the, the last ability? Well, the last ability, mostly known as Bubble, but uh, Dome of Healing. It's noticeable as it will make a huge bubble. Uh, Dome of Protection, actually, will make a huge bubble in the middle of the zone. The difference, and a pretty notable one, is that the enemy one will be pinky reddish, while the ally one will be green. Um, uh, while standing in a dome, you cannot heal. Well, you can heal, but all the healing received to your allies will be transferred to the dome's HP, which without a focus initially has 400 HP, stay like that. And um, when it bursts, it counts for all, all its initial HP, it counts as healing done. While you should notice that while healing inside of it, all healing done will be negated and give you a negative score. Uh, if you have the right, if you have the right focus, like I do, which is, in my opinion, the strongest one, the only one, but a very strong one, it will give you a bubble with 300 uh, HP, which is 100 less than before, and a 100 heal to everyone who is inside it once it bounces. So you can basically do a blessed beacon, which will be a huge clutch heal. Pop a bubble, it gets destroyed by the damage, which will be pretty big if you need to clutch heal. Uh, standing in a wall or in a firestorm will make the heals be very needed. Another 100 will give you a pretty big advantage, a 10% advantage to the enemy and while the bubble disappears you will have a second or two to maybe place one or two M1s on an ally which will regain a lot of mana and basically make your bubble free or your next cast free which might be blessed beacon again. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Now breaking down some like healing combos or how to pick people up quickly. Um, I think mana management is really important. A lot of classes it's important on, but I think managing your mana and making sure that you have as high mana as, you know, for most of the fight is extremely important. Now, with a base of 100 mana, you can only cast three seeds. 
with base 100 because it is 30 mana each which is very expensive um, that's 90 out of 100 mana and see so if you're forced to heal yourself you're not going to have that mana to cast your your direct heals or your blessed aura or your blessed beacon to heal your teammates really because you're going to be um so the best way to uh, manage your mana is to constantly be M1-ing. M1 is so important to shaman. A lot of shamans make the mistake of only trying to heal with their heal or by casting um, fervor on low targets. Fervor is actually one of the it's one of the most inefficient ways to heal. You never want to fervor a low health target. It's always better to just heal them directly because you're wasting you know if you let it channel full you're wasting five seconds of time healing just to do one more second you're wasting six seconds to get n not that big of a heal for someone so low and they may it may already be dead if they're getting tunneled or focused down so in wanting it does stack three times like we said earlier so having that stack and that 20 heal per second is really huge uh, my main way of healing, like he touched with bubble, is I am one the targets that are low, and then if it's gr the group that needs healing, you blessed beacon, you can throw bubble up, let that bubble in. I use bubble time to start stacking him one again, so that way as soon as bubble pops, because I'm not healing inside of it for too much, it'll pop for 100, I have those stacks of M1 up, so they'll be gain as soon as bubble pops, that's 100 health, my beacon will be off of cooldown, so I'll be able to beacon again for another 120 health, plus they will be gaining the heal over time from my M1 stacks. So that's a pretty way to clutch heal your team or a single player. Other than that, if you have the mana to, you can cast your heal. I like to cast when I like to cast heal twice, um, depending on how low of health they are. If they're like say 50%. I'll cast heal twice and then M1 them twice and then try and heal them again with regular heal. And that should pick them up to full. And if not, you'll have that heal over time stacked up so you can change to another target to heal and use maybe a blessed aura which will hit your initial target if they're next to each other. So it's really important to um, like remember like, hey, I have M1 stacks on this person. I got the three stacks. I can switch and heal someone else and they'll be getting healed over time. Um, really it's just landing your heals and making sure that you have as much uptime as possible with M1, your blessed uh, beacon, and your direct heal. Is there anything you think you can add to that, Reprieve? No, that's basically it. Like, other than that, of course, the main part of fervoring pre-fight other than the damage will be the ability to save people, as it will give you, like, a heal of 225 for the cost of 25 mana, which is a really good way to use a strong heal. Escaping with spiritual burden is always useful. Watching out that your blessed beacon, as you said, doesn't get blocked by it enemy and other than that yeah we, we agree on the m1 and um yeah the thing how much speed i i personally play with minus 3 percent speed but playing with zero speed you don't you don't you don't definitely need any bonus speed and spending your points on that is not advised uh i play with minus 3 percent speed which suits me well and the other in mana 150 mana seems to be uh pretty sufficient for me and other is in armor spiritual uh, natural and magical speaking of um dome also like if you have a curse on you or a pantera's kiss you can use just before it the ability takes effect you can throw out your dome to negate the effect and heal yourself kind of to absorb most of the damage and get a heal off on yourself. So that's another useful way to use dome. Um, and the other thing too is like talking about mana, I think one of the most important things is increasing your mana right off the bat as a new shaman because yeah. that's going to allow you to get more cast off, use more heals, use more seeds. Uh, I recommend minimum, I think minimum you need 120 would yeah. be a, the absolute minimum if you want to go. It's all preference, what you want. You may want to be tankier with more armor, but uh, 
I minimum I'd say 120 is about as low as you want to go. I personally have mine at 135 and wish I had a bit more. Um, but I feel good with that there. But increasing your mana is really important. What I like to do with bubble in situations like pre-fights, in team deathmatch, if it's pretty obvious where the clash is gonna happen, say it's this map and you see teams grouping up and engaging, uh, and you know that there will be a fight on the location where we stand right now. I like to pop a bubble, use beacon, eventually small heal, and heal with M1, which will give you a bubble with like five, six, seven hundred HP, depending on how much how much healing you want to do. And when the enemy engages, there's a big chance that like at least five to six hundred damage will be negated because of the bubble placement because you had time and you did it well you pre-healed it and um, that might be a game changer because it will give your team enough time to move out of initial firewall or leave the stun uh, while taking zero damage uh, yeah one other aspect that you really need to pay attention on uh, as a shaman and I, this is may this may be more of an advanced tactic, or kind of more. Inc you may ha need more awareness for this, and may take some time to get used to. But watching your determination bar, Pazik, if you could stun me, um, and then stun me again, just build my determination up. Um, your first, your first uh, attack after the stun, the disorienting strike. Uh, is going to be a miss. What I like to use is if there is a, a friendly nearby, I cast heal on them to get rid of it, but if I need to get rid of it quickly and I can't get that heal off, you can just seed. It will miss, um, but that's how you get your miss off. Uh, other than that, your determination, if it's built up fully and you have 100% determination, you cannot be stunned. So that's a good time to run into the fight and you can get links off without being stunned. So if you go to Link and uh, you have full determination, there's no way someone can interrupt that uh, unless you know they LOS it or block it. So that's a good time to try and maybe go for links is by watching your determination. Uh, yeah, all healing done inside of the bubble will contribute to its HP rising. So even if you heal units, yeah, uh, that, that's how I use it. You pop the bubble, you pre-pop the bubble, heal people up, get five, six, seven hundred. Yeah. While we're waiting on the next round to start, we've discussed the classes pretty in depth. If anyone, this is the time that we can, we're going to unmute. Uh, people and just if you want to ask any questions via twitch or in game or through the mumble ask be courteous and listen to someone's question and let us have the time to respond to that and uh yeah we'll go over people's questions or answer anything they uh may need help with you guys are now unmuted and feel free to talk all right, I like to go first. Uh, what spell do you like to spam generally when you're just harassing from a long range as Pyromancer? M1 and Firestorm. Yeah, it depends on the situation because if there is allies fighting there where you're uh, trying to deal damage, maybe a Firestorm or, or an Engulf that slows the enemy may be more useful than your most one. But if you're trying to get to the fight, uh, faster, use most one and sprint at the same time so that you can uh, waste mana to sprint and regen it with most one. But, and if you're playing peekaboo, do curse because nobody can absorb it if it's a 1v1, but other than that, I really think that you should keep uh, Firestorm, right, Brimey? Yeah, that's true. Alright, any other questions from anyone? Doesn't have to be only towards our classes. Would be for the BVB, but like we have Y here, who's a Pathfinder. Yeah, if you have Pathfinder questions, or maybe just another one, we have experienced players for all the classes. Um, so if you, you know, you are here for a different class, then you can ask away and we'll answer. 
people watching this stream at home uh, on Twitch, go ahead and uh, ask questions there too. We'll see them.